The Britpart all-wheel drive Safari Championship headed to Walters Arena for its latest instalment, this time combining the championship round with an additional challenge, making the AJS 100 a two-day event for those who were up for the ultimate challenge. Sponsored then by AJS Tires, the event allows championship contenders to battle for those championship points on the Saturday only, and anyone wishing to fight for overall event honours can carry on throughout day two. On to the first day and the championship point scoring day, of course, then. And previous round winner Alex Parpotas would be the fastest out of the blocks, opening up a good lead of the event at the midpoint on day one. That lead would be over Andy Skelly. He certainly didn't have much luck last time out, I think that's fair to say. So this good start would be welcomed, even more so if he could keep this going for the rest of the event. For Paul Rowlands, it will be third. A good start, but he of course will be wanting to jump up those podium places a little more as the day went on. And just outside the podium places, it will be fourth overall for Jason Rowlands and Matthew Hall. The pair lying third in the class at this stage as well. A wrong turn on the stage this morning wasn't helping them with the overall times though. Things were going to plan meanwhile for Steve Smith and John Griffiths over this morning's runs. They end the morning with fifth overall, second in the eight time class. The only issue they were having was inside the car. The driver trying to keep his breakfast down. This weekend would be the first time racing on all-terrain tyres for Mike and Margaret Bakewell. This venue, of course, now only allowing those tyres to try and limit damage to the tracks. They were pleasantly surprised, though, with the amount of grip provided by the tyres, and they end the morning with sixth place overall as a result. Ian Parry once again takes a lead in Class 8 over the first three runs of the day, and it would be a good advantage as well, just over a minute, in fact, in that class lead going into the afternoon runs. Clutch bearing problems would cause Gareth Edwards and Steve Smith to miss a few runs while trying to fix it in service. They do end the morning though, and with eighth place on the leaderboard, fourth in 8i. For Mike Coward, meanwhile, it will be second in class eight, a little way back from the class lead, but of course, anything can happen, as they say. He ends the morning inside our top 10 with ninth place overall. And rounding out the top 10 at this stage will be Martin James. On his own in the car this weekend as his partner was on babysitting duties. Cheering him on from the outside of the car this weekend. He does lead the way in the 7i class as well for now. And it would be a short-lived event for Adrian Marfell. Problems with the car would mean run two was as far as this event would go. It was looking good up to that point as well, but the car clearly not sounding right as it exits this corner on his second run of the day. Frustratingly as well, things were not going to plan for Rod Parker and Dave Hooper. They find the limits of the car, rolling it onto its side on the opening run, losing 20 minutes in the process. They do get going, but without an intercom and down in 32nd position. Let's take a look now then at some of the places outside the top 10 and in 11th overall, it would be Gordon Monaghan taking second in the 7i class with those times as well. It could have been higher, but for a couple of minutes lost on run two with a puncture. Rob Bull will be taking the place of Victoria Vaughan this weekend in her car. Matthew Rowland alongside, 12th place overall for the pair. Third in class would be theirs at the midpoint of the day. Just like many others, this weekend would be the first time on all-terrain tyres for Alex Freeman and Lee Barnes. They do have a slight off into a ditch through the morning, but they keep going to end the day so far, with fourth in the class, 13th overall. For Stuart Williams, it will be fifth in 8i meanwhile. A couple of minutes off the next crew in the class, but also holding a good advantage in that position himself. And it will be a similar story for James Bull. Fourth in the six I class for him, the podium places in the class all being battled out up at the top of the overall leaderboard. A little too much speed into one of the corners would see Jasmine and Tim Philport pointing the wrong way on the track. Taking a little while to get the sequential box down into reverse, they end the morning with third in the seven I class and rather frustrated. And just behind the Philpots in the class would be Keith Wilde, 
fourth in the class, just over half a minute behind Phil Potter per head. Daryl Hardy and Rob Golding will be enjoying the course this weekend. And let's face it, that is why we are here, isn't it? They end the morning with fifth place in Class 8, 18th overall. Harry and Jason Nickel wouldn't be taking any risks this weekend, just looking to get the car to the finish in one piece. They were, of course, leading Class 7 after their class rival couldn't get the car ready in time for this weekend's event. Richard Mayer Barron and Claire Golding would be making their debut as well on these, by now, I think you'll find infamous all-terrain tyres. Taking a while to find the grip, they do start the day well though with the lead in Class 1. There'd be some problems, meanwhile, for Tim Payton and Mark Wayne. They all the stop, but the car needed a toe start to get it going. It wouldn't be the last of their problems either, but they do end the morning with the lead in Class 4, so all was not lost. And there'd be problems too for Philippa and James Tennant. They break an engine mount in the second run of the event. They do get it fixed, but had to catch up some runs, which was tiring for both the car and the crew. Second in class one for now. Mark Tosin would be second in class four, a couple of minutes behind the class lead though at this stage in the event. And it would be third in class one at the midpoint in the day for Ian Mawson just 12 seconds behind the similar car of Tennant up ahead. It would be all to play for then through the afternoon stages. For Stephen and Martin Nichols, it would be third place in class four, just less than a minute back from Tosin in that position. And for Tony Rooney, it will be fourth in that class. Frustratingly, a bad time on the third run of the morning would put him further back from that class fight than he would have anticipated or indeed wanted at this stage. Charles Dunn and Stevie Wake would encounter problems early on, losing the rear prop shaft on the opening run, having to run then in rear wheel drive. Not that you'd know the difference with the way the car is often driven. We do lose Bruce Mallet and Adam Beer in the early runs of the day. They get the car sorted after some bad luck and have a great feeling in the car, but sadly the engine proved too much power for the prop shaft, destroying it entirely on the second run of the day. And we'd also lose Andy Dare and Ian Marsh, the attrition continuing down the leaderboard. Their problems certainly easier to spot. They pick up two punctures in this run, trying to complete the stage, but unfortunately having to stop when the steering breaks further on, ending their event. So with the morning's runs on day one complete, it's a reasonable lead at the top for Paul Potters. But with the chasing pack behind and chasing hard, anything could happen. On to the second half of the day then, and indeed the end of the championship scoring part of the event. And it would once again be victory for Alex Paul Potters, managing to keep hold of that lead to the end of the day to take maximum points. It will be a welcomed finish for Andy Skelly and a good one at that, ending the event with second place overall. A complete contrast then to the retirement of the previous round. Frustratingly for Paul Rowlands, it was retirement on the final run of the day, crashing out on the steep downhill section of the course. Thankfully, OK, but the car will need some work before its next time out. So that does mean the final podium place would be awarded to Jason Rowlands and Matthew Hall, and deservedly so. Brake fade problems all day had held them back just a little from that fight, but they make sure there is at least one Rowlands on the podium this weekend. No problems in the afternoon for Steve Smith and John Griffiths. The 8i class victory will be theirs at the end of this leg of the event and taking with it fourth place overall. There'd be no problems to report either for Mike and Margaret Bakewell, second in the 8i class for the pair at the end of the day and taking fifth place on our overall leaderboard. There'd be no change to class eight though. Ian Parry still holding on to that lead to the end of the day and indeed to the end of his event as well, not competing on day two. Gordon Monaghan moves the right way up the results in the afternoon runs, gaining back some of that lost time to a puncture in the morning, ending the day with seventh place overall and now leading that 7i class. 
It would just be a single place gain for Mike Coward, ending the day with eighth place overall and remaining second place in class eight at this stage as well. There's frustration for Gareth Edwards and Steve Smith. They'd run out of time fixing the car before the end of the event, resulting in average times for the missed runs and putting them as a result into ninth overall to end the day. And rounding out the top 10 would still be Martin James. The only change for him being that move down to second in 7i with the advance of Gordon Monaghan up the overall results into that class lead. It would be a great end to the day meanwhile for Rob Bull and Matthew Rowland. Third place in class 8 as well as 11th overall. And Jasmine and Tim Philpott's times would improve as the event went on. And of course, as it dried up as well, they end their championship round with third in the 7i class as well as 12th overall. Alex Freeman and Lee Barnes get it all squiffy going off the road again in the afternoon. Nothing too serious, but certainly not helping those times. They end the day with fourth in class eight as well as 13th overall. And for Stuart Williams, it will be fourth in the 8i class to end the event. A good finish in 14th place overall as well. Daryl Hardy and Rob Goulding have a good, enjoyable run through the course. It suited them well. They move up the results throughout the day to end the event with 15th overall, fifth in the class. And with the leaders of the class taking the podium places overall, it would be first in 6i for James Ball today, ending the day with 16th overall. For Keith Wilde, meanwhile, it would be fourth in the 7i class. No change for him throughout the afternoon after a clean, steady run. It would be a great result as well for Lizzie Jones, finishing fifth in the 8i class this weekend. The time's always improving and a good result for only their 10th time out racing. New shocks and springs on the car would transform the handling for Leighton and Luke Dodds. They end the event with 7th in their class, 20th overall. It turns out the steady approach worked well for Harry and Jason Nickel, taking the class 7 victory this weekend and indeed with it wrapping that class up for the season. So the car and crew could now have a well-deserved rest for the final round. With the intercom now working again, Rod Parker and Dave Hooper were able to push for some good times. Sadly, with run six cancelled midway through, they get an average time, which of course included their run one roll, meaning 24th overall was as good as they could manage to end the event. Richard Mayer, Barron and Claire Golding were getting faster as the day went on. Confidence growing and finding the grip levels as well, they end the day with the class one victory as well as 25th on the leaderboard. A loss of first gear for Tim Pink and Mark Wakelin would make the steep slope scary, but they do manage to reach the end of the event with first in class four. The afternoon would hardly be plain sailing for Philippa and James Tennant, the engine mounting repair only lasting so long, breaking again on run four and needing repairs. They do finish though, and with second in the class. And third in that class would be Ian Mawson. 23 seconds would be the difference to Tennant at the end of the event in the other Freelander. For Mark Towson, it will be second in class four to end the day. A great end to the first half of the event. And for Charles Dunn and Stevie Wake, it will be third in that class. Two minutes back from Towson, up ahead by the end of the day. And rounding out the results, but crucially still running, would be Tony Rooney. Sadly for him, not recovering from earlier problems on run three. So with day one complete, this is how the results look. And indeed, for those in the championship, the pressure was now off with day two not counting towards the championship points. On to day two then of this unique and gruelling event and with a number of championship crews 
opting not to continue, it would mean plenty of change for our leaderboard and that wouldn't be the only change. The weather taking a turn for the worse. Very UK-like, a lot of rain coming down on that course. We'd lose our first crew, Luke and Leighton Dodds swapping seats for Luke's first drive in the car. Sadly though, it wouldn't last. Water and the V8 engine not mixing very well, it turns out. There'd be problems as well for Charles Dunn and Stevie Wake. Going off into the trees close to the end of one of the runs, losing them a few minutes, they end the event with third in class four, 16th overall. For Mark Towson, it will be second in class four this weekend, ending the overall event with 15th place. And just ahead of Towson on the overall leaderboard were Andy Kent and James Withers. 15th place for them, taking third in a tie by the finish. Frustratingly for Andy Skelly, day two wouldn't exactly go as well as the first day, ending the event with 13th overall after maximum runs towards the end of the day. And it was a similar story as well for Martin James. Problems with the car running properly, or not as the case may have been, would put an end to his event, meaning maximum, putting him down in 12th overall. With Philippa Tennant not continuing into day two, it would be automatic promotion to second in the class for Ian Mawson, finishing the overall event with 11th place. Day two then providing a big change for everyone, both in terms of the challenge and of course, that change in weather. But one thing that didn't change was the class one lead for Richard Mayer, Barron and Claire Golding. They get through the event to take that class victory overall on the event, as well as on yesterday's championship counting round. A good weekend in the bag. It will be good and bad luck for Daryl Hardy and Rob Golding, meanwhile, rolling the car on day two, the first time in 30 years of driving. Thankfully, it landed back on its wheels and they were able to get it sorted and back out to finish the event with ninth overall. For Mike Coward, it will be eighth, third place in class eight as well to finish the event. Tim and Alad Pink would be happy to get to the end of such a challenging event in one piece. Even more so, they'd be happy with the Class 4 victory and a fantastic seventh place on overall times. Plenty of change in Class 8 on day two with some of the crews not competing on this second day of the competition, which means it's second in the class for Richard Green to end the event this weekend. Everything was going to plan for Mike and Dave Bakewell on day two, coping with the conditions well that is, until the wipers packed up. They end the event as a result with a maximum on the final run of the day, still managing to salvage fifth place overall and that class win. So damage limitation and not a bad result given those problems. And it would actually be a similar story as well for Alex Freeman and Lee Barnes. Their wipers not working on some of the runs, meaning that they were struggling to see where they were going they do manage to end the event with a class eight victory as well as fourth overall. Rob Bull was one of our competitors back out on day two, this time though in his own car, which means that frustratingly, the day one times weren't going to count. Times for day two though would have seen him taking the lead of the event. Onto the podium places then, and it will be third for Gareth Edwards and Steve Smith. A steady run in these horrible conditions would mean no problems to report and a great result to end the event for the pair. It would also be a good end to the event for Gordon Monaghan, taking second place, missing out on victory by a few minutes in the end. That puncture on day one standing between him and potentially that event win, what might have been. But that does mean it's victory this weekend for this man Steve Smith with John Griffiths alongside. No problems with the breakfast coming up on day two, we're pleased to report. Just a good clean run to the finish to give them the overall win from two days of competition. A great addition to that fifth place from day one among our championship contenders. 
So confirmation then of the final leaderboard at the end of this challenging AJS 100 event here at Walters Arena in Wales. A successful event at the end of the day enjoyed by all of the crews, even if the Welsh weather did do its best to beat them. The championship reverts to its usual one day format for the next round and we will of course be there to bring you all of the action. In the meantime, you can of course catch up with all of the action from the championship so far on our social media. Thank you for watching Special Stage. Oh, <laughs> my